cake dish, <laughs> plug it in, turn it on. The wiring's done for them. It's already, it's literally it's already, already done. plugged in. Yes. All right, so right now my brother uses Elevate one gigabit fiber here in Delta, Colorado. And it's always going up and down. I think it's a Wi-Fi issue. He thinks it's an internet issue. His internet provider says they're never down. And I said, well, I see the Wi-Fi disappearing. Well, he has Google Mesh. Now, I have not used Google Mesh except for my experience here working at my brother's. My perception of it is crap. But, you know, that's me. It, I've discovered this Google Mesh, if it doesn't have internet, you don't even have a local net. It just goes away because it doesn't know how to function because it's stupid. Anyway, <laughs> with that being said, that means if internet goes out, his whole mesh disappears. He doesn't have a local net. So we don't know if we have a Wi-Fi issue yet or an internet issue yet. But we've also purchased the new Starlink internet. So what we've got here is a brand new PFSense NetGate router. It was the SG3100. And we are going to set up load balancing between the one gigabit and the Starlink. And so we're gonna have Starlink on the op port and we're gonna have the one gigabit fiber on the WAN port. And so just this is a real quick overview. It's really easy to do load balancing on a net gate. A PFSense just rocks, puts things like sonic wall to shame. So here we go, you can see we got two gateways up. Now right now we're not running his gateway in bridge mode, which we will do later. His ISP has to be contacted for that to be able to switch the fiber over to bridge mode. So it's going to be double natted right now and apparently the only way you can do the stupid Google mesh is if you're in router mode, basically you can't run it as a bridge and be a mesh. So that's another reason why I think it's junk. But you can see his gateway showing online. So I've got the op port configured for the second internet. So basically all you do to configure a net gate to be multi-WAN is you come in, you go to interfaces and it had the three main sections. You can delegate more. WAN was just called WAN, I changed it to WAN 1. This was opt one. I changed it to WAN two. All I did is I go into WAN two and I give it a name and I say it's DHCP. Okay, which it is. Even when we go bridge mode, it's going to be DHCP. Likewise, same with WAN one. It's just DHCP. That's it. Now, then you just go into routing, and I went to gateway groups, and I said add and I created a group. So when I added, I had a screen like this, and I just say, I want WAN 1 as tier one, WAN 2 is tier one. If packet loss or high latency, it'll shut it off, stop using it. So that, that's it. Then you go into the firewall, you go to rules, you go to LAN, you pick the main rule that allows all traffic from the LAN out, you edit the rule, because normally it says the gateway is asterisk. You go down to the bottom and you say which gateway. The gateway I picked was the one I created, which was the balancer between those two. That's it. Now you've got load balancing. One Starlink. Let's see what it looks like. So the instructions, take dish, <laughs> plug it in, turn it on. The wiring's done for them. It's already, it's literally it's already, already done. plugged in. Everything is connected. They don't have to guess about nothing. That's kind of nice. Oh. Boy, that is a pretty looking dish. Yeah, it is, isn't it? There we go. Wow, that's it. And it locks in and that's it. 100 feet of cable. Wow, okay, that's good. Uh, so you don't have to guess on that, and I'm assuming this plugs into, well that's the wireless. Now they don't give you another, so you either wireless or cable, oh no, there's the aux. There you go, you plug in your auxiliary. Are we sure? Ethernet yep. into that. Yeah. Awesome, all right. So right now, this is geo-locked, so this wouldn't work good for RV life. 
but once this is open where you can travel, I am getting one because this will give me the freedom I need because I work remotely for everything, but I do network it, man. I can't have a situation where a server's down and I can't get to it. I need to have internet. And the cell phone stuff, as you saw with our trip two years ago, just wasn't cutting it. So I'm really chomping at the bit for when this is finally able to be used roving. Um, I don't know when that's gonna happen, but it'll really be cool because you just plug it in and from what I've seen in other videos you pretty much just plug it in and you're good to go it finds where it needs to point and you don't really have to do a whole lot okay so now we're firing this puppy up uh, we should get some there we go we weren't all the way in there it's got lights it does mm -hmm. oh well there you go then so now it says What's gonna happen is this guy well you could you got it says you got to connect with your phone Oh yeah, I do. I already have that installed too. I missed it. It literally did it that quick. It just rotated. I didn't realize it was gonna do it that quick. So it's literally been about a minute. He walked away for a minute and it did it and I didn't get it. So now I just turn it off, turn it back on. It may actually not be hooked up yet. It may still be, it may just, it may, there, it's working. You need to take, you need to film. I am filming it. Oh, okay. It just did it. I think all it did was initiate. It's now looking for the satellites and it probably, there it goes. Now we're on. All right. So now I have to connect to Starlink. All right. So now I'm on the Starlink wireless network. And now let's go back to the app. Check for obstructions. Okay. So it says lift up. Install your Starlink where it has nothing in the sky view. So this thing said it was hung, it said it was connecting, setting up for like 20 minutes. It wasn't going anywhere. We disconnected the ethernet to our other thing. So don't connect it to your, your local network or anything until you're done setting it up because it apparently messes with it. Uh, as soon as we unplugged it within a couple minutes, it prompted us. So what he's referring to is we had this cable that goes to our router plugged in here. And yeah. that was messing us all up. We unplugged it and then it found what it needed. I'll go ahead and do that right now, but basically this is what the screen looks like. I'll click set up and then we'll come back and yeah, show you what so, it does. Yeah, so yeah, configure it like just call it whatever Starlink or something so you know. Oh yeah, I'll just make it Starlink. Yeah. Well, maybe give it a different name because probably if other get people get Starlink, they'll call it the same thing. Yeah, that's true. Configuring Wi-Fi. There you go. Reconnect to Wi-Fi. Open Wi-Fi settings. So now you're going to connect to your. Starlink. There it is. We'll just now go you to should be able to browse the internet through the Wi-Fi. Hmm. Well, just give me a. Yeah, it's working. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just. I know. I was going to try this. Well, I don't know. Well, it's all working. Be. Yeah, it's working. All I right. just wanted to do a speed test real quick. Okay, so right now, because it's not completely good opening, I, we've got obstructions according to our phone app. Yeah. The phone app says you've got obstructions. Right so, But now, we got 27 down and, and nine, up. 9 up. And that's better than DSL. Oh, yeah. All right, so I'm recording this. So right now we have the satellite as gateway one and has fiber as gateway two and you can see it's already got uh, 59 milliseconds but 89 percent packet loss so we're gonna have to move it to a better location so I've got the net gate marking it down at the moment because of the packet loss one other thing I did change was under routing you can see I set the monitor IPs to Google's DNS so that if it starts failing pinging those monitor IPs that's when it'll take it down is based on those. Now there are other thresholds and settings you can change. It's under system, routing, under the gateway itself I think actually. You go under the gateway itself and display advanced. Here we go. And so then you can set you know how often you want to do a ping test and all that stuff. What I've done is installed the speed test on the PFSense router. I did that so that we can do a speed test without having to use Wi-Fi because I don't have an Ethernet port on my laptop. I don't want to, to see what I'm downloading from the satellite with Wi-Fi. The WAN one is his fiber. 
and WAN2 is his Starlink. WAN3 is not hooked up to anything yet. So I went into WAN1 and I disabled it. So what you can see now is WAN1 is off, so it's not gonna to go to the fiber, and you can see that WAN2 is on. This is the Starlink. I do not believe you can put the Starlink in bridge mode, so when you're using the Starlink, you're gonna to have to be double natted. I don't think there's any way around that if you're doing this kind of configuration. His fiber, he's got the guy coming, they're gonna switch that into bridge mode. Uh, and this was his fiber, but it's disconnected. That's why it's offline. I plugged it in there just to test this port, just to make sure I had this configured right. So, right now we're getting a 36 millisecond ping, and uh, I had it up, but I installed the speed test. Let's go ahead and go in here and go to command prompt, and let's go ahead and run the speed test. So this is gonna be pulling a speed test from the PFSense router through Starlink. It takes a little bit because it's running the test and you don't see the output until it's finished. All right, so there we go. On that speed test, we've got 122 megabits down. We only got five up. But we had 20 up. We did have 20 up, just the last and a little. And 159. Down. Yeah, so it varies. Now keep in mind, this is not in a very good position. Right now that dish is being blocked. We moved it to what we thought was gonna be a better position, but we need to put it up on his roof because everything is just, uh, there are obstructions. So, we'll, we'll, we'll try a better position tomorrow. I'm gonna go ahead and run the test one more time. Man, dude, though, for RV use, I would take this in a heartbeat. I just can't wait till they actually make it where you can roam on this. Yeah, 150 down, 23 up. Tell you what, that's better than who's net, guys. <laughs> so, I, I, I say that's a, I would be, I would be satisfied for this. If, if I had no other options, I would definitely be satisfied with this. As a backup, I would be satisfied with this. Um, I do think that for myself, I'll have to weigh this out when the time comes. When it actually comes to where you can roam with Starlink, I probably would go ahead and, and disconnect my cable internet and just switch to uh, having one bill with Starlink. I don't think I could justify having cable and Starlink. Sure, my cable is about 200 megabits and 20 up, and it's probably going to be more consistent as far as speeds, but I don't know that I could justify having two internet bills. Um, I've got internet on my phone, so if I'm at home and I'm working and there's a little bit of an outage, I could use my phone. For example, when we had the storm hit and that the ratio hit, we had no internet for a month and I worked using my phone. So I could use my phone in a pinch for work if the satellite was out and then for traveling, the phone sucked. And a satellite, this would be an awesome option. So I think if you have crappy internet where you're at, I would, just from what I'm seeing here, it's definitely not HughesNet, man. It's, it, you, you know, HughesNet is a satellite. You're shooting to a satellite like 22,000 miles away. And with Starlink, it's a satellite a couple hundred miles away. There's no comparison. Do not be scared of this internet thinking it's going to be like HughesNet worse than modem speed satellite. So um, we'll play more with it tomorrow, but uh, that's our first test. 150 down, 23 up. And that's not in a good location.